What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, strengthsandsneakers.com. I'm covering all the most commonly prescribed medications in psychiatry for you guys here because these are the ones that the most prescriptions are written for every single year in the United States. Now, some of this is gonna be overlapping because the mechanisms of action and the way that these medications work is actually quite similar. So I'm going to try to cover the ones I haven't covered in previous videos and ones that I think are somewhat unique or that you might need to know about. So this one's going to be the story of citalopram or Celexa for depression, for major depressive disorder. Now, Celexa has fallen out of favor recently, and I'll explain why in a few minutes, but basically this medication works like all of the other serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Now, it's FDA approved for depression, but it's also used off-label for a ton of other disorders. So we use this in premenstrual dysphoric disorder, we use this in OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. We use this in panic disorder. We use this in generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD, seasonal affective disorder, social anxiety disorder, many, many different things. So there's a bunch of off-label uses, but it's really only approved for depression. The dosage is actually kind of low. It's once daily dosing, which is nice. The dosage is anywhere from 20 milligrams to 40 milligrams. Starting dose is usually, of course, lower, right? We start low and go slow. So we would start with 20 milligrams per day, and we would increase by 20 milligrams per day after one or more weeks with the maximum dose being 40 milligrams. Now, the reason the maximum dose is 40 milligrams and the reason citalopram itself has fallen out of, out of favor a little bit in terms of prescriptions, and this is, again, it's a very popularly prescribed medication, is because of the risk for something called QTC prolongation. And this is an electrical change in the heart. And if the QTC, which is a measurement on an EKG, gets too long, it can cause something called torsades, and torsades is an arrhythmia that can lead to death. So there's, there's concern for pro prolonged QTC, you know, specifically in someone who has a history of cardiovascular disease, someone who's elderly, right? We wanna be mindful of those potential problems. And I'll explain the elderly part in a minute why that's relevant here as well. So that's the reason it's fallen out of favor. And this was the medication used in a very, very famous trial as the initial antidepressant. Um, it, it's, it's very, very popular. And again, it was, it was used in the STAR-D trial as the initial medication that they were going to prescribe prior to changing to other antidepressants and making, making switches. So that's a very famous trial where they used citalopram. Now, many patients actually don't have as much improvement on 20 milligrams. They actually have more improvement on the 40 milligrams. So you really need to kind of get to that dose. But then, you know, again, we're, we're kind of managing the risks and benefits here of this QTC prolongation. If someone's coming off the medication, I recommend a taper of about one to four weeks. So we slowly go down on the dose over that time period. Most common side effects, are sexual side effects. In men, it's delayed ejaculation, erectile dysfunction. In women, it's reduced desire or decreased sexual interest. There's also other side effects that we should be mindful of, things like changes in appetite, nausea, dry mouth, sweating, in some cases, activation or anxiety. And we always wanna be mindful of the risk for suicidal ideation in patients under the age of 24. And those are some of the major side effects to be mindful of. Weight gain is possible with, the, with this medication, but not expected. So this is not one that we commonly think of causing a significant amount of weight gain, if that is one of your concerns. Now, there's a unique property of, anti, of all antidepressants, really, but specifically we'll talk in, in the case of citalopram here, that is called cognitive blunting or emotional blunting. We'll call it emotional blunting here. So emotional blunting consists of cognitive slowing and apathy, and we think that's actually related to the increased serotonin causing a diminished dopamine release. So that's the potential mechanism, but this is sometimes seen. Some people say they feel like emotionally numb, like they can't respond to things the way they want to emotionally. So this is an, this is an important thing to watch out for and be mindful of. We think citalopram is more tolerate, tolerable or better tolerated than some of the other antidepressants, and it may have less sexual side effects than some of the other antidepressants, and 
It also can be helpful, like I said before, in things like premenstrual dysphoric disorder, as well as treating hot flashes in perimenopausal women. In the elderly, again, we want to watch out because of that QTC prolongation, and it may be helpful in the elderly, maybe a bit more beneficial than other antidepressants, but now we got this risk of this changes in electrical activity in the heart. It what, another reason why I think citalopram fell out of favor is that we have what's called the S in antimer of citalopram, and you might already know what that is. It's called S citalopram or Lexapro. So we can actually use the more active form or the more active in antimer of the medication in lower doses. It does still have some risk for the QTC, even though it's the S in antimer. But that is usually a better option and more of a go-to option than citalopram, at least in my clinical practice. So I'm going to cut the video there. If you have additional questions about citalopram, please drop them below in the comments section. And please like and subscribe to the channel so that we can continue making videos just like this.